So we've dealt with multiplication and division of these radicals. When we have the same index and a non-negative radicand, we can either combine them or split them up, whichever is going to help us in that situation. So now we're going to look at addition and subtraction with these radicals. So what has to happen with these? So looking back to kind of a basic example, things that we're familiar with, how do we combine these two terms? First of all, are they alike? Yes, we're just dealing with x's. We've got two factors of x and another three, so I've got five all together. So those were like terms, so we could combine them. Now, seven plus root three, they aren't like terms. We can't combine them right now unless we approximate the square root of three. So we can't simplify this one unless we use a calculator approximation. But the thing on the end, we do have like terms here. Because we have the same radical, the same root index, and the same radicand, the number or the expression underneath. So we can treat these as a variable if we want to look at it like that. It's the same story if I've got seven factors of whatever sitting here, and one factor of whatever sitting there, how many altogether do we have? Eight of them. All right, so in order to combine these radicals, they have to be alike. And like radicals have to have what? The same index, so we're trying to take the same root, and the same radicand, the same number underneath. They have to match exactly on the index and exactly on the inside as well. All right, so let's look at some examples. Part one, I've got six factors of root seven and four factors of root seven. We have the same index. And again, if it's not written on there, what index are we looking at? Square root, index two. Okay, so just to remind you. So we do have like terms. How many factors of root seven do we have all together? 10 of them. Okay, they were alike, they match exactly, same radicand, same index. Part B, what do you notice about these? I've got same index everywhere, same radicand, but what we're combining together, 8, negative 7x, and positive 5, these aren't all like terms. These two on the ends match, but the middle one we won't be able to combine. So another way that I like to look at this is seeing what do all three of these have in common that we can take out of both of them? That radical, the third root of 2. And when we do that, what are we left with? From the first term, we've got 8. From the second term, minus 7x. And from the third one, plus 5. And we can combine our two like terms on the inside there. So we've got the third root of 2. 8 and 5 will give us 13, minus 7x. So sometimes, when we do take out that common radical, or we're combining our like terms, not everything is going to combine. Not always the case. All right, in part C, what about these guys? What is matching exactly? We've got the fifth root of 4x, fifth root of 4x, and then the third root of 4x. So we've got two that are alike and one that's different. And this one's different because of what? We have the same radicand everywhere, but what's different about it? Our index. So we can combine these two together, but we can't combine it with the last radical. doesn't have the same uh, index, so they're not like terms. So in the front, how many factors of the fifth root of 4x do we have? 7 and another 3 will give me 10 altogether. And we're still subtracting the third root of 4x. All right, so two for you. Go ahead and take those quick examples. Simplify them down. So in part A, do we have like terms? Square root 2, square root 2. Yes, they match exactly. Same index, if it's not written, what do we have? Index 2. 8 and 5 together gives us 13 root 2s. And typically we don't write the index for the square root, but again, if it's not written on there, it's a 2. And for part B, we have one, two like terms, and then an oddball on the end. Doesn't have the same index or radicand, we can't combine those. So we've got 10 factors of the 4th root of 5x, and we're subtracting root 7 off the back. So like terms for our radicals have the same index and the same radicand. Well, what about when they don't quite match? Looking at this first example, we have the same index of 2, we're taking the square root of something, but our radicands don't match. 
radicand of the first radical is 8, radicand of the second one is 2. We need them to be exactly the same in order to combine those. So how can we handle it? Can we simplify either one of those radicals so they will match? Root 8, we can break up into perfect square and something else. Largest perfect square that we can take out of 8 is 4, and our leftover term will be 2. So evaluating out of that radical, we get 2. 2 times 3 is 6 out front, so we've got 6 root 2 minus 5 root 2. Now we have like terms. We can combine them together, and we've got one factor of root 2. So if they don't match exactly, we have to manipulate them a little bit if we can. And in part B, sometimes we can't manipulate them. We do have the same index here, but our radicands are prime numbers. We can't break them down any farther. So there's no perfect square that I could take out of 2 or out of 3 in order to make those match exactly. So sometimes they just can't be combined. Cannot be combined. Especially if our radicands are prime numbers. We can't break them down any farther. All right, part C, we have the same index, which is great, but our radicands don't match exactly. This one's already simplified down. We can't break 2y down any farther. So it's kind of a hint as to what should be left over from this piece. So we're dealing with the third root. So the largest third uh, factor of 3 that we can take out of 16 is what? 8, which is a perfect cube of 2, and our leftovers. And then y to the fourth. Our power has to be divisible by 3 for it to be a perfect cube. Largest power of 3, less than 4, is to the third, and we need one more factor to get us to y4. Still have the thing on the end. So evaluating out of this piece now, cubed root of 8 is 2. 2 times 5 will give us 10 out front. What else is evaluating out? y cubed, we take our power, divide it by the index, and we get out y. And what's left over on the inside now? 2 and y. So now as we look at those radicands, what about them? They match exactly now. I've got 2y, 2y, same index, same index. But when we combine these like terms, what about the constants on the front? Can we combine those two? I've got y's and constants. We can't combine them together. So again, I think it's helpful in this way to think about what do they have in common that we can take out of both of them? Our radical. And what's left over from the first piece? 10y, the number hanging out front. And from the second piece, 7. Sometimes we can't combine those terms on the front. All right, three for you. Go ahead and take them. Simplify them down. So 45, we want to break that up into the largest perfect square and something else. It's usually a good indication. What's hanging out over here uh, is a part of the factors that we're going to break up 45 into. So 45, we can break up into what? 9 and 5. Still have root 2, or excuse me, minus 2 root 5 hanging on the end. Evaluating out from this piece is 3. 7 times 3 is 21. So now we have like terms, root 5. 21 minus 2, we're looking at 19 factors of root 5. We need the radicands and the indexes to match exactly. All right, part B. All of our radicands are different. The smallest one that we have, though, or the most simplified, is y squared. So we might be trying to work towards that, but let's just see what we can do with our radicands. All right, y5, breaking that up into the largest perfect cube and the leftovers. We need y2 and y3. Add them together, we get back up to the top. And we can't break down y2 any farther. 8 is a perfect cube, and y6 is a perfect cube as well, since it's divisible by 3. So what's evaluating out of this piece? We get 2y to the second. Take our power, divide it by the index, gives us the power on y. So evaluating out of this radical, y cubed is a perfect cube of y. And what are we left with there? Cubed root of 
y squared. So we've got two like terms in the beginning that we can combine. We have the same exact radicand, same exact index. And then we have this term on the end that won't be able to be combined together. So what do we have? Again, common between them that we can take out, third root y squared. And what's left over? 3y plus 4 plus the 2y squared on the end. Very last, we have different radicands. Okay, and we can't break these up like we could when we had multiplication everywhere because we have subtraction, subtraction. So in order to have a product on the inside to evaluate out a perfect square, we have to factor this. So what's common between these two terms that we can take out of both? 25. And when we do that, what are we left with? x minus 1. You can always check, put it back in, make sure we get back up to the top. And out of the second piece, common between those two, 9. Both of these are perfect squares, so evaluating out of the first one, we've got 5, square root of x minus 1. And out of the second piece, minus 3, square root x minus 1. Now we have our like terms. I had 5, and I'm removing 3, so I've got 2 left of the square root x minus 1. So our like radicands, we have to have radicands the same and index the same. A few special cases of multiplication are what we're going to look at next, just dealing with those radicals to get some practice. In part A, in order to get rid of the parentheses, what has to happen? We have to distribute in root 3 into each term. So let's do that. To the first one, what do we get? x times root 3. And we typically write the constant or the variable out front so we don't get confused if it's underneath the radical or not. And then we have negative square root of 3 times the square root of 5. So thinking back to our rules from the last section, we have the same index, and our radicands are both non-negative. So we can combine them underneath one radical together. So what are we looking at? Square root of 3 times 5, 15. And if we can simplify, we want to, but in this case, we can't break those radicands down any farther uh, to be able to simplify them. All right, for part B, same story. We have the same index everywhere, and all of our radicands are non-negative. So if we do need to combine them underneath one radical, we can. So looking at the first, third root of y times the third root of y squared will give me the third root of y to the third power. I had two, one more. And the next one, third root of what? 2y. Can we simplify down either one of those? The first one we can. What is the cubed root of y cubed? We just get out y. The second one, 2y is not a perfect cube, so we can't simplify that one any farther. All right. Part C, I've got a binomial times a binomial. So whenever we have that grouping, how do we get rid of the parentheses? We FOIL it. So from our first, what do we get out? 4 root 3 times root 3. There's lots of different ways we can evaluate that. We can either combine underneath the radical, then evaluate, or just notice that root 3 times root 3 is going to be what? 3, because we're taking the square root of 9, which is a perfect square. These are the factors that are involved. So I'm just going to write it out like this, 4 times the square root of 9, just so we can get comfortable with it. But once you start to recognize that, go ahead and simplify it right off the bat. So that was our first. Outer, we've got 4 times negative 5 is negative 20 on the outside. And the square root of what on the inside? 3 times 2, 6. Inner, we don't have any constants out front. It's just a 1. And what do we have on the inside? Root 6. So we can combine these two like terms much like when we FOIL with polynomials. And then the last, negative 5 times the square root of what? 4, which is 2. So we can simplify these, 4 times 3. And how many factors of root 6 do we have? 
we have negative 20 and positive 1 will give us negative 19, root 6, and minus 5 times what? 2. So we've got 12 minus 10 will give me 2 minus 19, root 6, when we combine all of our like terms together. Alright, if we could recognize that the square root times the square root of the exact same thing gives us out that value underneath, we can write that below. All right, practice in with another one of these. Again, binomial times binomial. We have to FOIL. So from the first, what do we get? Square root AB, combining them together, since we have the positive radicands, well, non-negative radicands, in the same index. Outer, what do we get? Plus square root 3A. Inner, plus square root 3B. And last, plus what? Root 3 times root 3. It's going to be a perfect square of 9, so we get out what? 3. And if we need to write all the steps in between, square root of 9, that's fine. It'll get us there. Can we combine any of these terms together? Aren't any of these radicands matching exactly? No. And can we break them down to match exactly? No. So that one's done. And our very last one down here, E. What form does this have? Just recognizing it right off the bat. Same thing in the same place. Same thing in the same place. And what's different about it? I've got one positive and one negative. So what happens if we have a story like that? X minus 3, X plus 3. When we FOIL it out, what do we get? A difference of squares. The middle term disappears. We've got a perfect square on the left, perfect square on the right. Same story is going to happen here. So let's see. We have radicals in the beginning. We'll see what we're left with at the end. So the first, root 5 times root 5. What do we get out? Square root of 25 is 5, whatever constant lives down there. And I've got negative square root 5 times 7 and positive square root 5 times 7. So they'll go away. And then our last term is negative root 7 times root 7 will give us out that value, 7. So the middle terms go away. We've got the positive and the negative version. And we just have constants to combine. 5 minus 7 gives us negative 2. So we started out with binomials that had radicals. But does our answer in the end have any radicals? That's a real number. So whenever that happens, anything of that form, when these are conjugate pairs with radicals, will have a real answer at the end. So like we discovered from the beginning, or like we said was going to happen, this makes a difference of squares. Makes a difference of squares. Because when we square a square root, we're undoing it. So our first term that we got out when we foiled was the first piece squared. The last term that we got out, the last piece squared, and we have a difference in between there. Difference of squares that simplifies down to a real number. So one more for you to try with those. Again, we fit that same form. Same thing in the same place. Same thing in the same place, and we've got a positive and a negative, we've got opposite signs. So it's going to create a difference of squares, and let's just see what happens. From the first, what did you get out? Root A times root A will give us A, the first one squared, undoing the radical. The outer, we get minus root AB, inner plus root AB, those two terms go away. And our last is negative root b times root b, root b squared. So what do we get? Just the radicand on the inside. Our middle terms, like we said, go away. I've got the positive and the negative version. They cancel out. And what are we left with? a minus b. So we started out with binomials that had radicals. But in the end, what kind of a number is this? There are no radicals involved. That's a real number, a rational number. We don't have any radicals. So expressions of this form, when we have the same thing in the same place and we differ by a sign, those things are called conjugate pairs. Conjugate pairs. 
And their product is always an expression that has what? No radicals at the end. Doesn't matter the order of the thing, as long as they're conjugate pairs, it'll always come out to be a real number. Has no radicals. And we'll use that later on to rationalize the denominator of a fraction that has a radical in it. So we want to get rid of them, and we know that conjugate pairs will do that for us. In the end, I don't have any radicals. But we'll look at that later on, just want to introduce you to that now. And the last two examples for multiplication, again, we just want to review this concept. Am I allowed to distribute this square over a sum? So what is that telling me to do? Take this quantity, the entire thing, root 3 plus x, times itself, how many times? 2 in total. So take root 3 plus x times root 3 plus x. So we can't distribute over a sum or a difference. We have to physically FOIL it out or use our little trick. So what do we get out here? First thing. 3, outer plus x root 3, inner plus x root 3, and last plus x squared. So in this case, do we have a middle term? Yes, because they were not conjugate pairs. We got the same thing in the same place, but they're the same sign. So we have a middle term, and how many factors of this thing do we have? Two of them all together. 2x root 3 and x squared on the end. Can't combine any other like terms, but we want to make sure in the end uh, that we do if we can. All right, and again, part B, we can't distribute over that difference. This is telling me to physically write out 2 root 5 minus y times 2 root 5 minus y. Will we have a middle term? Yes, they're not conjugate pairs. We don't have opposite signs on the inside. They're the same. So what do we get out when we FOIL? First, 2 times 2 will give us 4, and root 5 times root 5 gives us what? 5. We can evaluate it in part like that. And outer, what are we getting? Minus 2y root 5. Inner, another minus 2y root 5. And then the last, minus y squared. So what do we get in this case? First thing squared minus the last thing squared and two times each of them together. Our little cheat that we've been using when we multiply out those binomials when they're nice polynomials, it's the same story here. So what are we getting? 4 times 5 will be 20. How many factors together do we have of those two? 4y of them and minus y squared on the end. All right, so as always, First thing squared, we've got it. Last thing squared, we've got it. And in the middle, 2 times this guy is 4 root 5 times the second one. Always gives us that middle term. So if you're comfortable with those tricks, those cheats, you can use those. If you're not, physically write it out in FOIL. It'll still get you there.